Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you how to diagnose an airbag light. So what should happen is, when you go to start your car, your airbag light will come on and stay on for about like three to five seconds. Then it'll shut off. That means that your airbag system is working fine. But what happens when you go to start your car and your airbag light stays on or flashes? Well, this means that there's a problem with your airbag system. The flashes are actually giving you a code. This is a 2001 Mazda V3000. It'll work for the Ford Ranger, the Mazda V series, Ford Explorer, and many other makes and models. But what it does is it flashes. So one, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's code number 46 or 46. After you read your codes, it'll flash about five times. It'll give you five chances to read the codes. Your airbag light will stay on and that'll let you know that there's a problem. On some cars, there's no flashing, it just the airbag light comes on, and then you could just take it to Pep Boys or AutoZone or any of those parts stores and they'll check it for free. So code number 46 means that the driver's side seatbelt pretensioner circuit is broken. And the common cause for that is when you move your seat or you put stuff underneath your seat. See this wire here? I'm gonna go upside down. You could see that there's this connector right here, and what happens is moisture gets in here or the connector gets loose. A lot of times when you have something under your seat or when you move the seat forwards and backwards, uh, this will trigger this. It is a service bulletin for Ford, but they haven't had a recall for it. So all you have to do is take this apart and spray some WD-40 in it. So to get it apart, all you have to do is push this clip down on the end and pull this right out. Just like so. And you're going to spray a little bit of WD-40 in here or use some dielectric grease. That'll help out just a little bit, gets rid of corrosion. And then I'm going to just take this and plug it back in. Make sure it clicks, make sure this is together completely. Now move your seat back, and then now we're going to go start the car again. And we'll see if that light comes back on. Good, the light's off. So that's how you fix it. That code was number 46 or 46. That was the driver's side seatbelt pretensioner circuit. 47 is the passenger side, so do the same thing for the passenger side. There's also other codes. I'm not going to go through all the codes, but to give you an idea, code 1919, that's usually after your car gets into an accident or if you had an accident and the airbags deployed, it's the restraint control module memory and it's full. So you just have to replace that RCM and uh, that's the only way to fix that. There's code number 42 and that's the front impact sensor. Be careful when you're working with the airbags. You always want to shut the car off. You want to disconnect the battery for at least 10 minutes. Be super careful, because if you touch that front airbag sensor and it goes off, your airbag could go off, and that's definitely not good. The other thing that I'm going to mention is number 27. That's another common one. And what happens is the light bulb for this on-off switch for your airbag goes bad. It's called the PAD switch assembly. And there's a, a light bulb that you could buy from Radio Shack for only a few bucks. And the part number I'll put in the description, but it's number 272-334. And you could just solder in a new light instead of paying 200 bucks for a whole new system here. So that's just a quick video on how to check your airbag light. So if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you liked the video, consider subscribing. I publish how-to videos weekly. Also, if you have any questions or comments, just comment below. I answer all the questions and all the comments that you guys put on my videos. There'll be some videos popping up on the screen. You can check them out. Hopefully they're useful. You could click the screen or you could click on the links of those videos in the description and that'll get you to the video. You could also check out my Facebook and Twitter. They'll be in the description. It'll give you updates on when I do giveaways and tips and tricks and stuff.